Hey, uh, I just got this box I needed. Does anyone have a knife to open it? Of course I have a knife. Oh, perfect. Easy. Oh, well, sweet. Thank you. Yep. Uh, hey, uh, <laughs> I saw you had a knife there. I, I can't find the can opener anywhere. You would just, uh, want to open my can of tuna? A can of tuna? Tuna. Really? With this knife? This is a really nice knife, not to be used on a can. If you're like me, you love being that guy that when someone says, hey, does anybody here have a pocket knife? You say, of course I have a pocket knife because I'm a man. Um, but when trying to decide which everyday carry pocket knife to carry in your pocket, there's just a lot of information out there and it's easy to become confused. There are lots of YouTube videos about it's the best everyday pocket knife or everyday carry pocket knife for under $50. What's the best all around everyday carry pocket knife? And you're going to get totally different answers in different articles, YouTube videos. They're all going to tell you something different. And so today I want to help you be able to make a decision about the right kind of knife for you to carry. So I have a bunch of pocket knives here with me right here on the table. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the ones I have here and use them to illustrate a few important points. When choosing a pocket knife, the first thing you need to consider is, what am I going to use this knife for? Um, earlier, we sort of alluded to the number one use of everyday carry pocket knives, and that is to open boxes that you receive from Amazon or some other e-commerce store. Opening packaging. I can't tell you how often I use my everyday carry pocket knife. It's pretty much daily, but more often than not, it's to open a box or open a package for a kid's toy. Sometimes it's to um, unscrew something because I don't have a screwdriver handy, but I need to be able to get to a kid's battery. A pocket knife is an extremely handy tool to have, but what are you going to use it for? If your pocket knife is a knife that you're regularly going to take for fishing and you want to be able to use it for a lot of things, you might want a multi-tool knife because that multi-tool knife is going to have the pliers. It's going to have just more options for you. And frankly, when I'm fishing, I, I love being able to have the pliers, but that doesn't necessarily mean I carry a multi-tool as my everyday carry. I just carry a multi-tool in my tackle box. If you're like most people and just want something that's going to give you a simple, basic blade to use, then a regular standard flipper style pocket knife is going to do a great job for you. So the next question is, what kind of blade do you need on your pocket knife? Now, there are numerous blade styles, layouts, and designs. There's um, this here is a Tonto style blade. That's the where you have like a straight line from on the tip and then a straight line back. Tonto style. This is designed based on um, old Japanese swords. They had sort of that same shape. Um, and it's really designed for piercing. <laughs> Most of us with our everyday pocket knife, everyday carry knife, aren't doing a heck of a lot of piercing. And so a Tonto blade is unnecessary. It's pretty cool. Um, it absolutely works for opening a box, just like every other pocket knife. Um, but you don't necessarily need that particular shape for anything um, specific that most guys are gonna be doing with an everyday carry. What you're gonna see a bit more commonly that a lot of people are using is something a little bit more like this, this is more like a drop blade. It, with a drop blade, you get the back kind of curves down toward the tip and meets the tip, comes to a point, but it's not totally symmetrical. If it were more symmetrical, we'd call that a spear point. That's a drop tip blade. Um, and it's really common for, you know, for hunting. It's really great. Um, it's going to help you if you're using it for skinning at all um, to not pierce any organs and things like that. But it's also just a great shape for everyday carry. Most of the knives here on the table are some variation of the drop tip blade or this one is almost not quite, but it's almost a straight back. A straight back blade is one that's just totally straight along the back. Again, for opening a box, the shape of the blade is not going to matter a lot. The other element that might matter to you is whether or not to have serrations. Serrations are these jagged, almost saw-like points on the blade of the knife. Serrations are really great for being able to almost like saw through things, particularly for, I find it's really helpful for cutting rope and things like that. They, um, they're also great for cutting food, slicing a tomato, things like that. Um, because they act like an extremely sharp knife, even after they dull. 
The downside of serrations is they're a lot harder to sharpen. And so um, when you do need to sharpen them, you have to take a file and individually sharpen every serration, or you need to get someone to professionally sharpen it for you. Whereas with just a regular straight blade or flat blade, you're going to be able to sharpen it much, much more easily. The next thing that you might wanna consider is the material that the blade is made out of. These knives are made out of a range of different materials. This one is the Benchmade Bailout. This knife is made out of M4 steel. It's extremely hard, and because of that, it's extremely expensive. Um, it's, it retains its sharpness very well, but when it does come time to sharpen your extremely hard knife, it's gonna make sharpening take a lot longer. Um, so that's something to consider. Another thing to consider is the coating. Some of these really hard steels have a coating on them that makes them just a little bit less slick, a little bit more coarse. I've found that with these coarser um, coated knives that slicing through wet things, like if you take these things camping and use them for cooking a lot, uh, more often I slice up potatoes to throw in a stew, slice up carrots. I find that these tend to catch a little bit more when slicing food um, because of that coating. It just kind of catches it when you get it between the two sides of a potato. And so I actually prefer a slicker blade. Some of these in the middle are made out of also very hard steels. Um, S30V steels are pretty common in some of these higher end knives and they're often coated as well. And then some of these are made out of a much less expensive, more standard steel, like what you would get from pretty much any pocket knife you go buy at a gas station, at a grocery store, at a sporting goods store. And so I actually really like that less expensive slick steel that's easier to sharpen. I don't mind sharpening a knife on a fairly regular basis, but that's just my opinion. If you're out in the field and you're um, hunting and you're skinning an animal, you probably want a knife that's not gonna dull very quickly, which is why for hunting, I choose to carry a knife with a replaceable blade. But if you wanna be able to use your everyday carry for literally everything you do, you actually might be tempted to go for something like this that's gonna hold its blade a lot better there are a few other considerations in choosing your everyday carry knife. If you can go get your hand on the knife because you're gonna buy it at an actual store, you might be able to feel through some of those considerations. Some of those things are like, just how smooth is the action? How well can I flip it open? Um, how's the locking mechanism? Is it rigid? Um, how heavy is the knife? There are just numerous considerations there. This knife is made by Benchmade. The handle is aluminum with a coating on it, so it's really cool, but it's also very, very light. The downside of that is if you didn't know any better, this one also made by Benchmade, this is the Benchmade bug out. People who didn't know what it was, I asked them um, what they thought and they thought this was a very cheap knife because it felt like plastic, it was so light. It's not plastic, it's a very rigid, very good knife with a good action. I like the locking me mechanism on this knife. Um, you pull this back, so it's very safe. Your fingers are out of the line of the trigger or of the blade, I'm sorry, if you're closing the knife. Whereas on some of these, on most of these, in fact, most lock blade knives, um, there's some kind of a spring mechanism. And so in order to close it, you literally have to put your finger in the line of the blade, which is a normal thing. It's not unsafe to, um, to have to do that. You just get it to start closing and then you can move your fingers out of the way. No big deal. Some knives have this little kind of levery thing on the back. And what that's for is to help me open up the knife more easily. Um, I like having that. I'd rather have that than have a little peg on the front, which is what these knives have. There's a little peg there that I can use my thumb and flick them, but I find that I, um, I actually prefer the little tab on the back. Um, some knives, this is made by Spyderco. Some knives, this one has a hole. Um, I, I do like that the locking mechanism for this one's on the back. And the hole is there to flick it open, but again, I actually have better success on the back. When we're talking about the mechanisms, another thing to keep in mind is whether or not the knife has an assisted open. An assisted open is one where there's actually like spring built into it to where if you flick it, it actually helps you open it. I don't have to push real hard to open this knife. Now this is a Kershaw Cryo 2. This is the least expensive knife I have on the table by a long shot. And you can tell, I mean, it's still very rigid. Um, it's still a good knife, but it definitely feels, it's noticeably cheaper than the others. But I actually like the assist feature. Um, it is not the same thing as an automatic or a switchblade knife, which defaults open. 
um, which is not something I would recommend, by the way, for an everyday carry for almost anyone. Um, but the assist is nice. Some people like it, some people don't. Again, another thing to keep in mind. But a lot of those things really come down to preference. Do I care that much about the, the action and the smoothness in that? Or do I just want a knife where I can open the blade and I can use it to cut something and I can put it away? And that brings up the last, um, the last consideration when choosing your everyday carry pocket knife, and that is price. The pocket knives I have here on the table range everywhere from about $35 to $250. You'll notice earlier in the video when uh, my friend Nate asked me if he could borrow my knife to open a can of tuna, I said, with this blade, no freaking way. Why is that? Because I do not want to beat the crap out of a blade that I spent $250 on. Does that make it a very good everyday carry knife? Your everyday carry knife needs to be a knife that's gonna work for you, that you're gonna be able to use for any of the things that you need a knife for in your day to day. I carry um, different knives. Um, sometimes it's, uh, this is just a knife I carry. This is a knife that was given to me as a gift. Someone actually engraved my name in it. I thought that was super cool. I carry it very often. I have no idea who made this knife. I have no idea how much it costs. It could be a very nice knife. It feels pretty good to me. Certainly stacks up in my opinion to pretty much every single knife on the table here but I don't suspect that it was an extremely expensive knife. Maybe it was, so if you're the person who gave it to me and you're saying, that's a $200 knife, I'm sorry. In another video, I asked several of my friends, five of my friends, to take these six pocket knives and lay them out in order of what they thought they cost and to estimate the prices. None of them were even close. Most of them guessed prices that were about half or less of what they really were worth or what they actually cost. And a lot of them got them completely out of order, putting this Benchmade bug out, which is a $150, $170 knife, way down at the bottom because they thought it felt like plastic. My recommendation is to spend only as much money as you're willing to completely lose if that knife is broken or disappears. Because in carrying an everyday pocket knife, there's always a chance it's gonna slip out of your pocket. There's always a chance you're gonna damage it. That's kind of what the point of the knife is. It's meant to be the everyday tool that you use for everything. So go buy something that meets those requirements for your needs. Thanks for watching this video. If you still want a little bit more guidance picking your everyday carry knife, I have a lot more detail in an article that you can get to by clicking here. The link will also be in the description. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a like below and make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're putting out a video every single week all about different things and skills that a lot of men are into and you just might be into as well.